thank God our Father for our being here today. Come on, Harvest Church, give God a hand clap of praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad therein. Listen, the month of March is Women's History Month, and we decided today to salute our women of this ministry, and we're going to open up, amen, with praise and worship. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I The invocation by Reverend Margaret Hill. I will lift up my hand, O ye gates, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We thank you, God, for this brand new day, brand new mercies, for your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We welcome your presence in this house today, God. We welcome your presence in this house. We thank you, God, for the man of God that you placed here to bring us the word, open up our hearts and our minds to receive that which you have for us. And Father God, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest. Where the spirit of the Lord dwells. We're welcoming this morning. Welcome to the harvest. Where the table is spread. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Give God your hand. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. Welcome. Where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Y'all, come on. Welcome. Where the table is spread. Come on, my brothers. Oh, give God your hand. We welcome you to the Harvest Church Experience. 
Harvest family. Welcome to Black History 365. Today we highlight Claudette Calvin, who was arrested in 1955 for refusing to give up her bus seat for a white woman. She stated it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one shoulder and Harriet Tubman was on the other, shouting, sit down. I simply could not move. Some local civil rights leaders saw the event as a chance to highlight the city's unfair bus policy but decided that Colvin was too young to represent the struggle. Still, Colvin's act inspired Rosa's Park to do the same thing nine months later, and Park's arrest sparked one of the biggest civil rights campaign of all time. Thank you, Ms. Colvin, for your courage. I love to praise him. I love to praise him, Lord, Lord. I love to praise him. Oh,
we can feel her loss, but we're praying for that family. We're praying for our own church family, amen, as we navigate, amen, through this valley of what Psalm 23 called the valley of the shadow of death. Certainly glad to report that Mother Ruby Holloman is out of the hospital. She's home and recovering, amen. Amen. God is a healer. Amen. And we're praying for all of our sick and shut in. We're praying for, amen, those, amen, that want to be here and can't be here. And we're praying, continue to pray for all the bereaved family. Amen. I've learned that um, um, Brother Warren Thomas, that little right next door to the church, lost his niece. Amen. So we're praying for that family as well. Listen, today we have an 11 o'clock hour. It's not going to be a long um, hour, an hour of power. Amen. Right up the road, Westview um, um, Baptist Church. One of my sons in the ministry, um, Dr. A.D. Lenoir, we're going to celebrate their church anniversary. And this Thursday, we're going down to Homestead. Amen. To celebrate. Amen. That church's anniversary. Um, another son of mine, Pastor Emmanuel Whipple Jr. The bus Amen. We'll leave here at 6 o'clock. We're going to park in the lot behind the tire place. And we're going to get on the bus. We're going to leave and go down to Homestead Thursday night. Amen. And we're going to kind of rest for a while. Amen. So we've been running. But we certainly need you today. And we need you um, on Thursday night. Amen. Y'all mighty quiet. Come on, give God some praise. Listen, I have a very important announcement. One of my good friends... He is in the um, security business, free security, um, D license training, ages 18 through 24, free, free. If you are 18 through 24, you get free training to get your license, amen, to go to work. 18 through 24, free, amen, free, amen. And Splash Security, security training group. Amen. Brother Tim Morris, amen. He's no stranger here to this ministry. I have his phone number, 305-319-2830, 305-319-2830, Tim Morris, amen. Splash Security, ages 18 through 24. He has a grant to get you trained for free. Amen. Please spread the word, our young people. Amen. You don't have to pay for it. It's 18 through 24, free. I never want to be 18 again to now. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So I wanted to disseminate that. Y'all help me help our young people. Amen. Because the difference is always just an opportunity. Just an opportunity. You know why FAU is in the Final Four? Because they had an opportunity. Amen. They, they, just because you're the underdog. Amen. You give an underdog an opportunity. The skies are the limits. Am I right about it? Amen. amen. God bless you. Listen, pastor's not going to preach tonight. Tonight, I said tonight. Amen. Today, amen, Sister Elaine, um, Minister Elaine Green. Amen. We'll bring the word today. It is Women's History Month, and I say all month, amen, we ought to put up a woman preacher, amen, in this month of March. The men has already sung their songs. We tried to do our best. Amen. Amen. And, and now we're going to hear from the Lord by way of our very own. Amen. Minister Elaine Nelson Green. Here. Good morning, family. Good morning. Amen. It's so good to be back in the house of worship once again. Amen. An opportunity to give God the glory and to give God the praise. Amen. Can we give God praise for our pastor, the first family, all of the ministers, deacons, saints, and friends? We, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you now and we want to tell you thank you for another opportunity to stand behind your sacred desk. We want to ask you, Father, that you that, that we decrease, that you increase in us and allow your people to see you through the message as I saw myself through this message. 
And Father, we thank you for being the God that you are of our lives. And Father, we feel we'll give your name the glory and the praise. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You will find us. Amen. In 1 Samuel 25, verse 23 through 24. 1 Samuel 25, 23 through 24. Amen. And for those of you that have it, say, I got the book. And others say, I'm still looking. Wait on you. Amen. We're grateful for our pastor giving us our opportunity. Amen. Because believe it or not, some pastor, men pastors don't believe in women standing behind their sacred desk. And this is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. First Samuel 25, 23 through 27, it says, 23, I'm sorry, 24, 23 says, when Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, pardon your servant, my Lord, and let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. If you would, Look at somebody and say, the characteristics of faith, beauty, and wisdom. You may take your seats. The characteristics of faith, beauty, and wisdom. This month, we are celebrating National Women's Month. If I'm correct about that. Please allow me to share with you about the woman named Abigail. At the beginning of this story, Abigail is the wife at the beginning of this story. So there's a plot and there's a twist to this. At the beginning of the story, Abigail is the wife of a wealthy man named Nabal. Abigail was an intelligent, beautiful, and a woman of faith. Abigail also prevented David from doing something rash and harsh, an unexpected future, which would cause an unexpected future for her family, if it would have happened. Now, if it would have happened. If it would have happened. The story of Abigail was interesting because of who she was married to. Because <laughs> of who she was married to. Ladies, <laughs> I'm going to talk to the women today. Is that all right? Men, I don't want y'all to get mad at me today. It'll be all right. The story of Abigail was interesting because of who she was married to. Who was she married to? She was married to Nabal, which was a rude and a mean man. He was disgusting. Now, that's the Bible. I ain't talking about none of y'all men out there. We talking about Nabal today. Nabal was rude and he was mean. In this lesson, the focus is around two men and one woman. Two men and one woman. <laughs> Two men and one woman. Y'all catch y'all now. Two men and one woman. <laughs> David was the other man. The other man. While hiding out in the wilderness, David and his men took a job protecting the flock of Nabal. Upon hearing that Nabal was shearing his sheep, David sent 10 of his men to collect compensation for the good they had done for Nabal. I'm trying to catch you up a little bit. He 
sent them to ask for food and money. Now remember, 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 Nabal, remember Nabal was a rude and mean man. So when David sent those 10 men, Nabal laughed. He laughed. He refused David's men. He refused them. Now there is something else that Nabal did, and I was like, help us Jesus. Help me. He spit in one of the men's face. We can talk, but don't spit on me. God bless your heart. Continue to go with God. Listen, the ball refused these men. He spit in their face. The ball then asked, who is David? Who is he? Who is the son of Jesse? The men went back and told David what Nabal had done. He went back and told him what Nabal had done. Now, David did not take this rejection too lightly. He got upset, and he swore to kill every male associated with Nabal's household. That's what he did. That's what he did. I'm trying to paint, yeah, I'm trying to paint this picture so you can see where Abigail fell into. How Abigail got into this point. Because this is going to help us women today. Uh, Y'all not getting mad at me and might not speak to me no more. But, but, but we gonna help the women today. We gonna help the women today. Ah, we gonna help the women today. Yeah, we gonna, we, we gonna help the women because I had to help myself. Come on here, somebody. Uh, now, David swore to kill him. Abigail Abigail was a little nosy. <laughs> Women, it's all right to be nosy sometimes. It's all right to be nosy sometimes. Especially when it's surrounding the man of your house. I can't hear nobody. Especially when it's surrounding the man of your house. Oh, you talking about killing my man? Oh, what, what, what we gonna do? Huh? What we gonna do? Yeah, listen, honey, let me help you. Abigail heard what David was going to do to her husband. And being the woman of faith and wisdom, the characteristics of faith, beauty, and wisdom, Abigail went to David and met David on the road. So this is what Abigail did. Abigail stepped into action. She stepped into action. Women, listen, listen, listen. There's time that you just can't sit back and be cute. You got to step into action to cover your home. I can't hear nobody in here. You got to know when to cover your home in prayer. You got to know when to cover it. Because you got the power to do so. My God today. Verse 18, Abigail acted quickly. She, she stepped into action. She took, this is what Abigail did now. This is what Abigail did. So, so don't be talking about y'all ain't got no food in y'all house. Abigail went and found some. She took loaves of bread. She took some wine. I'm sure it wasn't no cheap wine. She dressed, she took five dressed sheep. She took some roasted grain. She took cakes of raisin. She took cakes of pressed figs and loaded them on the donkey. Can't you just imagine yourself? You done heard about something getting ready to happen to your husband and your household, and you load up your whole car. Let me go take care of this situation for my boo. They say, they say the way to get to a man's heart is to feed to his stomach. So if you know you can't cook, ladies, grab your cookbook and feed that man. Feed him. Ain't nothing wrong with some bald eggs. She stepped in the action. 
action to try to fix the situation. Her character of faith allowed her to move into action. If she would have been scared, she would not have done it. So ladies, if you know you're a little scared, ask God for some little courage. Ask him for some courage. For we must know, ladies, the power that lies within. We got to know the power that lies within us. She put those characteristics to work along with her faith. Action. Action. After the action, then there was an approach. Verse 23 and 24 says, When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, Pardon your servant, my Lord, and let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. Which means Abigail didn't go yelling. She didn't go, honey, you can listen to me. What I got to say because I got to tell you something. She went with some grace. She went before the Lord humble. She went before him humble. Her approach was of humility towards the man. It was approach of humility towards the man. She wasn't snapping. She wasn't clapping back on him because of what she heard that he was going to do. Women, no, they ain't clapping now, Pastor. Listen. Her characteristics of faith allowed her to be humble. Because of her approach, David thanks her and repents. Thanks her and repent because of her approach. Women, we can get a lot done. We can get a lot done the way we approach a situation. We can get a lot done the way we approach a situation. Listen, I'm not telling you nothing I heard. I'm telling you about myself too because I was in this. Because I had to find myself in this place too. Because when you when you raise with a whole bunch of boys and you the oldest girl, you tend to be like, oh. but at some point in my life I had to get you gonna be cute, you gotta be humble. Come on here, somebody. I know I'm gonna lose the women today. Listen, let me t let me let me let me see. Let me share this with you, ladies. The men don't care nothing about your red pumps if your attitude is nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't care nothing about your shape if your attitude is nasty. He don't care nothing about how beautiful you are if your attitude is nasty. But here is what happened. She was humble before this man. Her approach was nice. And she was beautiful. She was beautiful. She was a woman of faith. She had beauty. And she had some wisdom. I can't hear nobody in here. You see where I'm going? How does your character dictate your actions? How does your character dictate your actions? How does your character of faith allow you to approach situations in life? Come on, come on, come on. Abigail did not take the approach of a husband. Yeah, yeah. Just because she was married to the nasty man, she didn't act like him. She wasn't rude. She wasn't nasty. Let me explain something to you, ladies. The way we act will humble our men. Pastor say, say it again. That's my leader. The way we act will humble our men. I'm talking from experience. Catch me outside. I'll tell you about that later. She had enough faith to think, if I go to King David with humility of God, he will not kill my husband and all of the men of town. 
The characteristics of faith, beauty, and wisdom. There was action, there was approach, and finally we have acceptance. Acceptance. 35 says, then David accepted from her hand what she had brought him and said, go home in peace. I have heard your words and granted your request. It's in the book. Because of her faith, there was no bloodshed. Because of her wisdom, there was no bloodshed. And I know her beauty stepped right on in. Be say it again, Brother Washington. She had it going on. Because of the source of her faith, beauty, and wisdom, David accepted the peace offering from Abigail. Even though her faith caused her to risk her life. Caused her to risk her life. She was determined to be the woman that God had destined her to be. She was determined to be the woman that God had destined her to be. I don't know about any other woman in this building, but I can tell you about me. All I want to do is be the woman that God wants me to be. So that means I got to walk right. I got to talk right. I got to love. I got to have faith. I got to have some wisdom. And I got to be cute. Do I have any witnesses in this building? Ladies, y'all going to leave me hanging? Do you really want to do what God say? Do you want, really want to live like God wants you to live? Listen, if you live like God wants you to live, he will bless your home. Listen, we as women, we can either build our home up or tear it down. And that's the Bible. A foolish woman will tear her house down. Come on here, somebody. Hey, God. Hey, God. Listen, I got happy in this here thing. I got happy in this here thing. And then I had to say, Lane, check yourself again. Because I'm going to take this first. It's going to come to me first. Because I need it. And I want it. Listen, you can hear the word, but if you don't want it, it ain't going to settle in your spirit. You can hear the word all day long. Yeah, you got to want it. Now, when Abigail arrived back home, there was a party going on. There was a party going on. And she knew that Nabal was going to be mad at her for what she had done. So ladies, what did she do? She did like some of us. She kept it to herself. She didn't tell him until the next day. Like some of us do. Baby, I put $200 on the card. But that was yesterday. That was last week. Have mercy somebody. So she waited until the next day to tell him what she had done. Nabal got sick after hearing what Abigail had done. So you mean to tell me he was just that mean and nasty that he got sick? Because wait a minute, I think he got sick because he know another man that done checked out his woman. I told y'all at the beginning it was too... Two men and one woman. <laughs> Nabal got sick. In the end, Nabal's wealth, his wife, and his very life are taken from him. He dies. David, 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 David. Heard that Nabal was dead. Good call to mighty. It's like, wait a minute. She beautiful. She got some faith. And she's a woman of wisdom. David finds out about Abigail is a widow. He sends for her. What does David do? He married that beautiful woman of faith and wisdom. Ladies, if you're married in this house, that man 
thought you was beautiful, a woman of faith, and a woman of wisdom. Don't y'all fool me in this house. Abigail's characteristic of faith allowed her to move into action, approach the situation in a humble manner, and it allowed her to be accepted. The characteristics of faith, beauty, and wisdom. Her characteristics was faith, wisdom, beauty, prayer, poise, humility, and intelligence. God bless your hearts. Continue to go with God. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some glory. The characteristics of faith, beauty, and wisdom. That's how you culminate Women's Amen History Month. Come on, give God praise for Minister Elaine Nelson. Amen. I, I thank God. Amen. Sister Stafford, he had her preach that, not me. Amen. Amen. Won't, won't God do it? Amen. If I was saying the same thing, I'd look him up there mentally trying to do that man thing. Amen. Thank you so much, preacher. Amen. How many know the truth is the truth? No matter who tell it. Amen. The truth is the truth. Have you any river that seems uncrossable? Have you any mountains you can turn on through? Specializing in things impossible. You know what I found out? He can do what no other power, Holy Ghost power, can do. Have you? celebrate this last day now let me say this um, let me make myself very clear we celebrate women all year round yeah. Yeah. but it's just on the calendar that March 
is Women's History Month. So in this last Sunday of Women's History Month, amen, amen. Come, come to Jesus. Come by letter, come by baptism, come by Christian spirits, come. Pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life, come into my heart. Create in me a clean heart, renewing me the right spirit. Father, I believe you sent Jesus to die for me. But I believe he did not stay dead. He got up with all power in his hand. I'm confessing with my mouth and believing with my heart that he's your son and he died and you raised him from the dead. And I'm willing to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, you're saved. You're not in the ark of safety. Find you a church, amen, that preaches the unadulterated word of God, amen, that will help build you, amen, to give you character, give you some faith, amen, and produce some wisdom in you. Listen, I feel this in my spirit. Somebody desire prayer. Come, come down. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I feel it. Specializes, God specializes, God specializes. Come on, we got we got we got time on the clock. Don't leave the same way you came. If you don't need prayer, stand in the gap for somebody else. Come. Be your intercessor. Every head bow, every eye close. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come, Lord, because your words say, man ought to always pray. And you said in your word that the prayers of the righteous avail of much. And so, God, as one thing we all know, we all stand in the need of prayer. God, we thank you for the opportunity of prayer. We thank you for the purpose of prayer, the power of prayer, and the privilege of prayer. God, if it had not been for prayer, I would have lost my mind a long time ago. Oh, God, there's some people I can't talk to. There's some people I can't tell my struggles. But, God, I thank God that your, your ears are always inclined to my prayers. And so, God, we stand here in your sanctuary. We stand here around your throne, the altar, God, and we lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. God, we lay our troubles. We lay our burdens. We lay our trials at your feet. God, not to pick them up and take them back home with us. God, we leave them at your altar. God, we live in a mean and cruel world. God, we live in a world where people will smile in your face and stab you in your back. And so, God, we pray now our strength. We pray our endurance. God, guess what, God? We so mature. We're not going to ask you, amen, to, 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 to take us out of what we in. God, we're going to ask you for the strength, amen, to survive it, for the strength to endure it, for the strength to navigate through it. Because after this trial, after this battle, I believe I will be better and not bitter. Thank you for the things you used to burn some stuff off of me. Thank you for the fire. Thank you for the trials. Thank you for the afflictions. It was good that I was afflicted because it led me to you. Heal now, deliver now, set free now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we feel you. We feel you in this place. God, we thank you. Amen. We thank you in advance for deliverance. We thank you in advance for a breakthrough. God, we will not break up. We will not break down. We will break through. God, give me a breakthrough spirit. Give me a spirit to look to your heels from which cometh my help, knowing all my help comes from you. God, give me peace that surpasses all understanding. For we realize that peace is not the absence of problem. God, you can give me peace in the midst of what I'm going through. Because God, I realize the devil is a liar. The devil is the, a liar. He's the original liar. He's the origin of all lies. I will not listen to his whispers. I will walk by faith and not 
by sight. My latter days will be greater than my former days. The best is yet to come. I speak it in the atmosphere. I am victorious. This year will be greater. This week will be greater. The rest of this day will be greater. I speak greater over my own life. I speak greater over my home. I speak greater over my finances. I speak greater. Greater. Shout greater. Greater is not coming. Greater is already here. pray this in the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus. We pray. In Jesus' name we pray that all that love the Lord shout amen. 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 Find three people and say greater, greater is here. Greater is here. Tell them be encouraged. Be encouraged. Greater is here. It's not on the way. It's already here. Greater faith. Greater focus. Greater fortitude. Greater. Amen. 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 And look at your neighbor and say, won't God do it? I know he'll make a way. Anybody else know he'll make a way? He'll make a way. Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters. Thank you. Amen for the message and the messenger. Amen. Thank you, men, for opening up for us this morning. Amen. You did a marvelous job. There's some ways to give that I want to share with you in the streaming audience. Amen. We have three ways to give. Cash out, dollar sign, New Harvest Church, Zale. Amen. Harvest1198 at Comcast.net and Givelify. You can be found um, New Harvest Church. Matter of fact, if you have the Givelify app, if you go to it, it'll take you right to this church because you're close to it. Amen. Amen. We, well, we also have QR codes, amen, for those that are watching at home. We have the Cash App, Zelle, and Givelify. Now, when you hit that Zelle um, QR code, it's going to tell you to put your bank in. Then it'll take you to where you need to be. Can I get a witness in the building? Amen. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And God, here's it. God loves a cheerful giver. Am I right about it? So we thank you so much for worshiping with us. Amen. Again, to our viewers, we have an 11 o'clock outing at Westview. Elaine did her thing and got us out on good time. We don't have to rush. Y'all can hang out and follow me to Westview Baptist Church. Amen. At 11 o'clock, we're going to do a good hour of power. Get you out of there. And remember, this Thursday night, we're going down to Homestead. I will text you the address. Amen. But you really don't need an address if you're not driving. Just meet me. Amen. 530. Amen. Park your car behind the tire place at 530. We're pulling out at 6 o'clock to get there at 7. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. Thank you again for worshiping with the Harvest Church.